All right, Kyle Mohan Racing. We're hanging out in the KMR shop, and I happen to have some of the coolest rotary parts available to date. We're working on some billet ink aluminum billet block motors. This is a 13D peripheral port. And uh, aside from that really awesome billet ink uh, side plates, we also have one of Chip Ursu's amazing peripheral port housings here. So we'll do a quick little talk. One of the great things about uh, billet ink plates and modern billet plates is not only are you saving weight, um, they are a stronger design. There's actually more robustness in the areas that are needed. Also great oil flow characteristics, and I mean if you're uh, familiar with aluminum, they have a great heat dissipation property. So a lot of things that your typical piston industry has already used are now finally available on the rotary side, rotary market. And if you are interested in any, in any billet ink components, yes, KMR is a distributor. Um, we've been working with these motors for a while now. Very cool, very cool stuff. Another great thing about your billet blocks is they are already coming pre-studded. So not only is this a stronger component from the manufacturer, not only does it have a replaceable face in case, in case something happens to go wrong at some point, you're not, you know, throwing away the whole side plate. You're actually able to just replace this uh, insert component, but it's already pre-drilled for your studs. Um, half, half inch studs, pretty much the uh, industry standard at this point. Um, do a great job of just adding strength to the block, holding everything together, eliminating twist, um, basically creating the strongest block possible. So over here we actually have our Chip Ursu peripheral port housing and some neat stuff going on here. He's been able to insert actual aluminum to fill this water jacket area, and this would be a typical procedure for any peripheral port housing, but... Pretty much everybody out there, the industry standard, has always been some type of epoxy fill. Um, Devcon, Aluma fill, um, even people use JB Weld. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, there's better stuff out there, but it does work. Um, one of the downsides to any epoxy fill or Aluma fill is eventually that epoxy starts to separate, break down due to heat cycles, the expansion and contraction of the aluminum. Um, no matter what anybody does, there is a fail point at some time down the road. So I really like what Chip's been able to do here, basically eliminate all of that epoxy and do a CNC machined insert to basically make it solid rotor housing. Uh, a lot of people ask, hey, don't I need that water passage? No, you don't, especially if you're doing a peripheral port. Don't worry about it. You will not lose any significant cooling. Now this area is air-cooled. Imagine that. All right, now talking about the peripheral port itself, um, depending on who's doing it for you, there's a lot of things to know. One of the things me and Chip worked on was the positioning of it, the actual size of it, and the shape of it. All of these things create different horsepower band and slightly different drivability characteristics. The bigger the port, the slower your actual air velocity is. And if you're running a naturally aspirated setup, this can make a difference to your bottom and mid-range horsepower. On a turbocharged setup, it will also have some effect. And then whether you're NA or turbo, the positioning of it, whether it's being moved up or down, is very similar to changing that internal cam timing on your piston motors. But in the rotary world, we're doing it with intake timing. Very similar principle, but done in a different way. I see a lot of ports out there that are very square, very big, and, and that's your normal for your drag race setup. But as you can see here, we've, we've gone with a much rounded closing side and a fairly flat opening side. And both of these change the characteristic drivability. You really don't want to let that apex seal hit a flat surface on the closing side. Um, there are issues with increased apex seal wear 
And when you're dealing with air velocity, it's better to actually squeeze that air down. So I've always been in favor of a rounder closing um, versus a sharp closing. You're going to get better longevity out of your apex seals, out of the components, less wear. You're less likely to have any uh, substantial damage or anything happen along the way. And it's helping with your air velocity. Um, the size of the hole also will make a difference. In this case, we're turbocharged, so we wanted to bring this, this opening up as much as possible, and that's something Chip was able to do with his proprietary fill right here. And that's helping us with our drivability, our min range, and our air velocity. Um, and then also, we didn't go too aggressive on this uh, size of hole. It's a little under the normal racing size, and it's done with a Wiggins clamp. So we've got some, some great usability um, it's great for working on and it should last way longer than the uh, the typical old-school peripheral port setup another nice thing here just uh, similar to other companies but I think chip uh, again is really uh, doing some marvelous stuff here this is actually a threaded insert so it's not just being pressed in and you also notice that it doesn't protrude all the way through so you're actually still able to run on all of your chrome surface and it's really hard to see but you can actually see that that sleeve is butting up against a CNC cut surface so you're eliminating all of those chances those issues of the the older style peripheral port of having it leak water leak air come loose this is threaded in, mated to a flat surface, a pressed in aluminum sleeve creating a solid portion of rotor housing, eliminating any chance for water leakage, and just giving you the best of all of the possible worlds. Still on these beautiful billet ink, uh, billet blocks. And I uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about the final steps that we're doing here before our assembly. So if you've been following along, you can already know that we've been doing test fitting on almost every component, the titanium studs, the dry sump front cover, checking every aspect of the motor to ensure that when it goes together for its final assembly, it is truly a final assembly. And we've got to the point now where we're going to be sending out these beautifully machined rotor housings by Chipper Sue over to our friends at WPC Treatment and we'll be doing a WPC treatment process to the running surface and I really recommend this especially if you're building a high-end motor um, you're going to get a longer lifespan out of that component and a better operational quality and it also does give you a little bit of extra protection as well and one of the things I really like about the billet blocks is not only are there running surfaces removable so you could replace them if you did end up having any type of uh, situation occur. Um, but you can see that the actual plate itself, there's actually a lot more strength engineered into this com component than the original cast housing. So you're getting a lighter motor that's stronger, that's more modular, so you're actually able to work on it better. This is the modern equivalent of what a lot of aftermarket piston companies have been doing for a long time and I'm just really happy to have this type of quality and components now available for the rotary industry and I'm really happy to be working with these components. Here we have the block mocked up. No internals but wanted to make sure that all of our dry sump fitment was finalized before we go into final assembly just like everything else. Everything has to fit before you assemble. Make sure to follow Kyle Mohan Racing. We're going to be doing a lot more of these videos, KMR tips and tricks. So feel free to ask questions about what you'd like to know. And we'll try to put some videos together to answer. Kyle Mohan Racing, Rotary Knowledge.